uh, all the organizers for inviting me. It's a great pleasure to participate in this workshop, even though uh, I have to do it uh, remotely this time. So uh, unfortunately, I couldn't make it through uh, UK uh, French border. Um, so what uh, what I will talk about is uh, uh, will be much. Uh, uh, much more embarrassingly simple than two previous talks. So, um, uh, in all respects, so the, the, this uh, uh, the, the results that I will uh, show you that this come from a um, couple of uh, papers we did together with uh, Juliette Leblanc already a while ago, and now we want to um, push this towards. Um, particular applications and see what are the good uh, uh, generalizations of these results again to uh, bring this closer to uh, to solving uh, in helping solving concrete problems in physics and engineering so if everybody uh, if anybody uh, 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 feels that it can be uh, um, can be useful uh, and would like to work on something similar or have some uh, nice application in mind Please do uh, contact me. I would be happy to uh, to work together on that. So uh, the, the outline of the talk will be uh, as follows. So uh, I will show you the motivation for the, the mentioned results uh, from a PD context, and then uh, I will show uh, I will present you the the problems that we are interested in and uh, how they can be attempted. In uh, two different, uh, in two uh, uh, parallel frameworks, in the uh, in the context of uh, uh, unit disk and in the context of half plane, so everything is in a uh, planner setting here. So, uh, um, of course, these are the totally uh, 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 interchangeable uh, uh, settings, but the presentation of the results uh, uh, in in some cases is easier in one or the other. So, and, and then I will conclude with uh, 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 mentioning some generalizations we already had in mind. So uh, let's start the situation. So we are interested in uh, uh, generally in, um, Cauchy problems for elliptic PDs and uh, uh, over-determined, so these are over-determined problems. So instead of uh, uh, having data prescribed on the whole boundary of the, of the domain, and uh, uh, let, let's say the main of harmonicity, so if we are uh, in, interested in, in solving Laplace equation, we, are, uh, we have data um, which are available on the part of the boundary, and but um, this will be both Dirichlet and Neumann data. So this is really the, uh, the Cauchy problem. And on the other part of the boundary, so in, in, in this uh, illustration is gamma, uh, uh, nothing is known, but it may be that it's our interest is in finding solution, not just inside of the domain, but actually deter, uh, um, finding it on this complementary part of the boundary. So uh, a related problem is a, a inverse boundary problem. In, in this case, again, you have a part of the boundary where you uh, you have uh, both Dirichlet and Neumann data, and the, uh, the the other part of the boundary is simply unknown. So, uh, but what you know is that uh, solution must satisfy uh, uh, a certain uh, certain condition there. So, in particular, here it's um, Neumann zero condition. So, uh, the part this a part of the boundary gamma should be determined from that condition. And actually, uh, the, the this. Uh, second problem is related to the overdetermined problem by means of the uh, uh, can be related by means of the constructing of the appropriate uh, conformal map. So if uh, uh, this is a uh, 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 um, a little bit similar to what uh, Elias uh, mentioned in the uh, for the oblique derivative problem, so um, uh, we can construct analytic function by constructing a harmonic conjugate of uh, of, of u of a uh, uh, function that you want we want to find in the uh, uh, original problem and the um, we can uh, 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 under reasonable conditions on the boundary data we can guarantee that this analytic function is uh, uh, actually uh, um, uh, uh, conformal map so that um, the, its derivative doesn't vanish, 
And uh, then if, uh, um, if we look at the uh, unknown part of the boundary and from the Cauchy-Riemann condition, the normal derivative is related to the tangential derivative of harmonic conjugate function. And that means that in the, um, in the domain U and V, this will be just a horizontal line. So now if we uh, uh, look up uh, a, a, uh, inverse map, then we, we, are, we have, uh, which would be also analytic, uh, we, have, uh, 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 we have problem with the fixed geometry, but with the uh, 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 data available on the, uh, this blue part of the boundary. So that, this is just to say that two problems are related. So uh, another, uh, uh, another problem comes from the um, a little modification of the first problem by um, uh, adding some uh, uh, pointwise conditions from inside of the domain. So suppose that you have measurements on the, um, uh, available on, the, uh, on part of the boundary, but also somehow you can um, peep inside the domain at certain, uh, at certain locations. So you, uh, you would like to, uh, um, your solution to meet this, uh, uh, these values. Uh, so this could be uh, such problem can also be addressed in the in the proposed framework. So of course in the unbounded domain, so in like half one setting, the situation is uh, very much similar. So again on beta we have uh, 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 over determined data, and uh, on gamma we have uh, we have nothing. So uh, th th this uh, half plane setting can also uh, be modified. A little bit and considered, for example, um, this is the case uh, in some uh, experimental setups that we uh, we have um, measurements coming of the uh, in, inside of the, uh, the domain of uh, harmonicity, and but the boundary uh, value may not be uh, known. Only some partial information about it may be known. So here, from this uh, uh, blue part, uh, uh, beta part uh, in, in, inside of the domain of harmonicity. We want to, uh, uh, to to solve the problem or deduce the behavior of the solution, uh, some aspects of behavior in the solution. So uh, let's start for the, for the problems on the disk. So here I will spend uh, most of my time, and uh, uh, the canonical problem here is the uh, problem of the uh, 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 analytic continuation inside of the domain or extrapolation of. Uh, boundary value uh, function in, uh, inside of the, the region of the analyticity. So I will use uh, uh, analyticity and, uh, uh, and uh, holomorphy uh, interchangeably. So, uh, so sorry for that. So, uh, so, so uh, uh, in particular, I think there's the simplest setting. We have uh, uh, holomor uh, holomorphic function on the disk. And we want to reconstruct it from its values only on the part of the boundary, this uh, uh, blue part I uh, of the boundary. So of course, if we had data on the whole boundary, then it would just be Cauchy formula. But analyticity is uh, 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 such a strong requirement that it's uh, actually enough, uh, in a sense, to uh, to know the values of f on I to uh, uh, to, to provide such some sort of reconstruction algorithm for f inside. So, uh, well, uh, I'm, I'm uh, being vague here because uh, this is, of course, an uh, uh, unstable process. So the algorithm is, uh, uh, exists, but it is unstable. And um, <clears throat> so in part, uh, uh, the name of this uh, uh, algorithm is, uh, is well, Carleman method or Carleman formula. So this is explicit uh, a process or explicit formula how you could uh, uh, capture f inside of the domain uh, of, of uh, analyticity in terms of its uh, uh, boundary values on, on i. So this is essentially based on the integration against some auxiliary uh, function, which contains parameter uh, alpha. And then this parameter will, will be taken to, to infinity. So the, um, uh, if you don't like the, this limiting, a character of this formula, you could uh, get rid of the limit by uh, at the expense of introducing token, another uh, another integration. So these are uh, absolutely equivalent um, uh, representations. So uh, the um, function phi uh, that appears here is uh, uh, so it can be written explicitly for the um, uh, for the case of Unidisc. 
Uh, this is so-called uh, quenching function, and uh, its role is to uh, um, uh, to, to uh, suppress the behavior in the representation form, or suppress the behavior of the um, integrant on the uh, on the unknown part of the uh, on the part of the boundary where f is not known. So, so it's uh, constructed for for these reasons. So uh, since what I will uh, tell you next. Can uh, can related to this uh, Carleman formula? Uh, I think uh, it, it's meaningful to spend a, a minute or two to, um, to to show you why it actually works because it's uh, uh, it may uh, uh, look scary if you're not familiar with this, and uh, I'm sure there are people who uh, haven't seen this before and. Um, but actually, though, it can be explained uh, in uh, a few lines. So uh, why does it work? So in order to understand that, let's consider this function that appears in the uh, exponential of this phi function. And uh, this is the actually uh, can, can be written as an um, uh, integral of uh, Schwartz kernel uh, against the characteristic function on the uh, subset of the uh, uh, of the boundary. The, of the uh, unit circle i, so um, uh, Schwartz, uh, Schwartz such Schwartz formula reconstructs holomorphic function in terms of its uh, the, um, real values on the boundary. Uh, so um, so that that means that this function g is holomorphic, and uh, its real part on the boundary is characteristic function of i. So it's one on uh, i and zero on j. And as a real part of polymorphic functions harmonic in D, so it satisfies uh, uh, minimum maximum principle. In particular, the real part of G uh, would be bigger than zero, and it is important. And uh, since G is uh, holomorphic, uh, phi, which is the exponential of G, will also be holomorphic inside of this. And because real part of G is bigger than zero, uh, absolute value of phi will be uh, bigger than one inside of the disk. And uh, since real part of G is equal to to, to zero on j, the absolute value of phi there will be one. So these two properties are important. Uh, now, uh, uh, since uh, phi is, an, uh, is analytic and uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's also non-vanishing, it's an exponential of something, we can take it to uh, uh, any power, uh, positive power alpha, and the product with uh, uh, fz, which is uh, analytic, uh, uh, will also be analytic function. So f is what we want to reconstruct the analytic function inside of this. So uh, we can write a Cauchy formula for that. And then we divide over phi to the power alpha, both sides, and split the integration into i and j part. And now uh, this uh, uh, important properties that we, uh, we demonstrated above, that uh, absolute value of phi uh, uh, of that is bigger than one, and phi of psi on psi is on j is equal to one, come, they come into play. And uh, in particular, they uh, imply that this quotient is smaller than one. So in the limit as alpha goes to infinity, this uh, uh, second term uh, will uh, um, uh, will vanish. So we would arrive at the, um, at the column and formula that we want to derive in the first place. So now the... Uh, um, what happens in the more practical setup? So when we don't have the uh, exact knowledge of the uh, analytic function, but uh, uh, the, we have boundary values which are only L2, so um, that might be uh, maybe arbitrarily close to the real trace of uh, analytic function, but not exactly equal to it. Then the above uh, extrapolations in this Kalman extrapolant would. Uh, 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 would necessarily fail, so it will fail in a sense that the uh, the uh, value um, of the extrapolant on the j part of the boundary will uh, will go to infinity as the limiting parameter alpha increases. Uh, and this is not very surprising because Cauchy problems for uh, elliptic uh, uh, PPDs are known to be imposed. So there's a lack of continuous dependence uh, uh, of the solution with respect to uh, uh, boundary data. As, uh, uh, everybody can recall the Adamar, uh, uh, famous Adamar example of such instability. So the good uh, uh, question to pose is then uh, not the extrapolation, 
of boundary value problems, but the constraint approximation. So uh, uh, we need to regularize the problem and uh, hence consider constraint approximation problems. And for this too, uh, we need to introduce a functional framework, which would be uh, uh, the, in the simplest case, uh, uh, hard space H2, which uh, the spaces of holomorphic functions um, holds integrals over the uh, um, over the circles uh, uh, remain bounded all, all, all the way to the boundary. So this uh, such, such functions have uh, uh, boundary values uh, almost everywhere, non-tangential limits, and can be uh, identified with a, a subspace of the um, of the square integral of functions on the uh, on the circle. Uh, with such subspace that the uh, Fourier coefficients of a negative or, uh, order must vanish. So these are exactly those functions which would extend analytically inside the data. So there will be no uh, no uh, negative powers of the of, of that. Um, <clears throat> okay. So the um, uh, uh, traces of uh, analytic uh, of Hardy functions are dense. In the L2 of i. Um, so that means we can, uh, given a, a function g on i, we can approximate it arbitrarily close on uh, um, by uh, uh, Hardy functions. But the uh, no matter what the approximating uh, family is, the, uh, 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 the, the behavior of this uh, uh, approximant would be uh, uh, arbitrarily bad on the complementary part of the boundary. So unless uh, the uh, the given function is exactly the trace of uh, of uh, a Hardy function, so that means that we uh, we need to impose some constraint to uh, to, to regularize this problem, and uh, uh, the constraint would be just bounding this value that goes to infinity, so bounding it by a fixed number m. So uh, so the, the problem that we want to solve is to approximate given function g by uh, f. Uh, uh, in H2 class and well, such that it's uh, uh, L2 norm on G is bounded. So that such problem can be shown to have a, a unique solution and constraint will be uh, necessarily saturated. And the solution is characterized by uh, its normal equation. Uh, it must satisfy normal equation. So P plus here is a projection from L2 on the uh, uh, on the boundary. Uh, on the circle to to the um, uh, to a Hardy space H two and lambda which appears here is the uh, uh, Lagrange parameter which is introduced to uh, um, the degree of freedom to meet this constraint. So uh, getting rid of P plus operator, we uh, uh, we have to, int uh, to 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 introduce function psi which would be in the orthogonal complement of uh, Hardy space which would which would be a, a arbitrary function. In um in the space of functions uh, holomorphic outside of the uh, outside of the unit disk and vanishing at infinity, so this will be uh, exactly Riemann-Hilbert problem. Well, Riemann-Hilbert problem in a uh, in a sense of Riemann-Hilbert transmission problem. Um, so uh, referring to the distinction uh, in the outline in the previous talk, I guess. So. Uh, and, th and this is uh, e even a, uh, a th the most simple problem you can have. It's a scalar Riemann-Hilbert problem, so it's uh, you could easily solve it uh, explicitly. And the solution is given here. So here I also brought the solution in the form which can be compared to the Carleman formula that I showed you. And uh, uh, in particular, we, we see that the difference is that there is no limit uh, limiting passage here. So alpha here is fixed. Uh, and actually, it's related to the value of the Lagrange parameter lambda. So, what and the Lagrange parameter, just to remind you, it should be chosen in such a way that the uh, L2 norm of the solution on J uh, 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 should be equal to the prescribed value M. So, uh, what is the good choice of um, given M how to? To, to choose uh, lambda without sol uh, uh, solving the problem uh, uh, too many times. And what is the good choice of M? So uh, in order to understand that, we could try to relax this constraint and consider the, the functions which measure the um, uh, uh, accuracy of the approximation on the uh, uh, I subset of the boundary and the growth of the solution on the J subset of the boundary. And this uh, to two functions, 
they satisfy the uh, they can be shown to satisfy uh, this differential relation. So in particular, it shows that um, the approximation rate is uh, increase uh, um, goes to zero, as lambda goes to uh, goes to zero, but uh, um, well, well, um, decreases. Uh, but uh, m zero square increases with uh, decrease of lambda. And uh, asymptotically, the, uh, the following bounds can be shown. So in particular, we can see that the, um, the, the decrease of the, uh, 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 the approximation rate is only logarithmic, whereas the increase of m, uh, um, of the growth rate on j, is, uh, uh, is algebraic, it's one over lambda essential. So there's this uh, uh, exponential uh, 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 it, it so uh, uh, it, this is a symptotical result. If we want to compute for concrete values of lambda, then we could uh, um, uh, uh, we could derive some uh, 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 some computational formulas um, in the form of the series by introducing some uh, uh, auxiliary quantity xi zero and uh, uh, sequence GK, which is related to the iterates of uh, uh, toplitz operator, that's the symbol of the characteristic function of the J. So that's, uh, um, uh, this is just to say that uh, we could, uh, we don't need to solve, if we want to adjust lambda, we don't need to solve for each uh, lambda every time to compute the, the, the solution, we could uh, use this uh, series. So now, um, I mentioned the problems with uh, in the beginning uh, with uh, point-wise data, and th th these problems can be uh, uh, um, effectively tackled in this uh, 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 analytic function framework. So, if we search for the um, H2 function, which is um, uh, uh, which is the sum of the uh, uh, given function psi, which takes the um, the given values omega j at given point z j. Uh, so it's a fixed function, for example, in this form, taken in this form, and then arbitrary function uh, from which uh, we could factor out uh, zeros in the form of Blaschke products. Then the, the the same problem as before can be uh, can be posed, and uh, uh, the solution can be uh, uh, again written explicitly in uh, in such a form. So uh, now a couple of words about half point problem. So um, it, absolutely the same thing for the, for the disk can be considered in the half plane setting. So the uh, functional setting uh, spaces will be slightly different. So it will be the uh, uh, hardy space of uh, upper half plane, which is essentially could be identified with the Fourier transform of uh, um, uh, of L2 function. Uh, can be identified with a, a subspace of L2 functions whose Fourier transform uh, vanish from the negative uh, half line. And um, so these boundary values generate uh, upper uh, 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 hardy functions in the, uh, uh, in the space of upper half plane. So um, uh, the, the same problem can be posed and, and solve the, uh, absolutely the same way as for the circle. So this is not interesting. What is interesting is that we can weaken uh, the constraint and uh, replace it, uh, constraint not just F on the J part, but uh, we can constrain only the real part of F. That will be uh, uh, enough to regularize the problem. And then uh, the solution reduces to, uh, uh, to the integral equation for the real part, uh, on the trace of the real part on J. And uh, solving this equation, <laughs> Uh, we can then find the solution uh, everywhere from uh, uh, from this re relation below. So this, solving this integral equation uh, uh, um, maybe not so easy. So it's uh, it can be reduced to half line equation, but it's uh, not uh, uh, not of convolution type. So um, a priori it's complicated. So uh, finally, the last uh, the last type of problem uh, that I would like to to mention is that. Um, uh, is when we have the we, we are given function in the uh, in the upper half plane and we uh, want to approximate it by the real part of some holomorphic function in this uh, in this half plane so in the particular in the hardy space of half plane um, 
And uh, 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 to regularize it, we impose the constraint on the um, uh, on the support of the of the trace of the real part of this uh, holomorphic function. So it's uh, support on the boundary. Uh, uh, for, uh, let's denote it S, so it should be bounded. And the the L two norm there uh, of the of the uh, real part of the um, uh, uh, of the trace. Uh, it should be smaller than some m. So this leads to the integral equation, uh, uh, which is here it's written in operator form. And uh, so the uh, um, F0 is just the real part of the uh, boundary value on the uh, um, of F. And the PY0 is the Poisson operator, which is convolution with the Poisson kernel. So lambda is again uh, has to be chosen to satisfy this uh, this constraint in F zero, and uh, in particular when uh, S is equal to I or it's uh, smaller than I, um, in this case also can be reduced to, to the uh, equality case. This is quadratic operator equation, and it can be solved by the uh, spectral decomposition of this uh, truncated Poisson operator. So then the solution uh, so that means that we need to find eigenfunctions phi n and eigenvalues of this uh, integral operator. Uh, compact alpha joint operator, and then uh, the solution F0 can be given in, uh, in terms of the, the following expansion, which features the spectral data. So um, this this type of equations are uh, can be easily solved numerically, and the number of asymptotic results are also available when the interval is i is large or small. So I uh, in the uh, winner hope for uh, uh, program workshop uh, in 2019. So once this uh, phi and mu n are found, then we could find F0. And from F0, we can find F anywhere in the uh, um, in the upper half plane by the uh, uh, Schwartz formula. So uh, the, uh, uh, it's natural to uh, extend it to the Poisson equation in some, some sense. It's uh, uh, it's it's easy to do when the uh, source term is uh, um, is very localized. So in a uh, in in a subregion, you will have the uh, harmonic function, and then you could incorporate the uh, the, the source term as a, a, in the boundary condition. So the, the the results could also be extended to conductivity equation. They are, it, it has already been done uh, so some years ago in. Uh, um, in the number of uh, papers, and this in, uh, invokes use of the generalized analytic functions and uh, generalized hardness spaces. Um, and the uh, uh, extensions to Helmholtz equation, I think, are the, the most uh, tempting. So here there are, uh, uh, of course, a lot of uh, practical problems which I think uh, could benefit from from these results. Uh, in particular, some inverse problems, and there are some uh, ways to uh, to obtain similar results uh, uh, with Helmholtz equation as as what I've shown here, uh, either like by deriving analogous Carleman formulas, uh, and, and then see how they correspond to the uh, 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 some constraint uh, uh, approximation problem, and uh, uh, or explore the way uh, of mapping. Of the solution from of the Laplace equation to the solution of uh, Helmholtz equation, uh, which are given by vector transform. It's an integral transform which does one-to-one -one mapping of one, one, uh, one set of the solution to another. So uh, uh, I, I'm a little bit over time, I think, but uh, uh, I apologize for that. And thank you very much for the for your attention. You're not over time, but you Okay. Oh. Great. I can. But well, much harder, uh, much harder problem then. <laughs> Well, near hurry problem, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, the, in the uh, uh, H infinity case, for example, there will be uh, no uh, density of uh, of the traces, as far as I uh, 
I remember. So uh, the traces of ancient tendency, yeah, the, uh, so this will be a partisan difficulty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Okay, well, uh-huh. Thank you. Yeah. Uh -huh. Ah, hi, Bardak, nice to hear you. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, hi, Nick. <laughs> I'm sure they will win. <laughs> Uh, y yes, sure. That's so. Uh, uh, that that's why here it's uh, well. I'm I'm showing everything in this uh, uh, canonical uh, settings like uh, this can half plane. But yes, you could uh, uh, transfer results to other uh, 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 simply connected domain. So and also analogous results uh, can be derived, for example, for uh, uh, analysts. So then you could transfer this to uh, doubly connected domains. So uh, yeah. It has certain degree of generality. Mm -hmm. uh. Well, the Carleman work is, uh, uh, I, I, maybe he was a pioneer of this. So this is the, for the this dates back from uh, roughly 100 years ago. So, and then there are different, so a lot of things are called Carleman formula. And then there are particular um, uh, different vari variations. So what uh, uh, I'm, I'm showing you here that the construction, for example, of this quenching function is, uh, is uh, uh, what is known as the galusian Krylov method, but then there are, uh, other methods like Lagrangian methods, and you try to construct similar formulas by approximating a, a Cauchy kernel by the traces of the fun function, which is an analytic uh, at the exterior of the domain of interest. So there is also a, a Pitman of method and so on. So there are a lot of uh, results which are uh, 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 which fall under this uh, uh, terminology of Carleman formula. But uh, it's uh, if you just um, consider a, a bounded extremal problem. It's uh, it doesn't it doesn't need to have. Uh, we don't really uh, refer to Carleman formula in the solution process. I just uh, brought the solution process the, the the solution formula in such a form that it can be compared with the Carleman. But it it doesn't use uh, the Car Carleman uh, uh, result directly. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> 